Part 1. Three Months Earlier Chapter 1. Millie Tell me about yourself, Millie. Nina Winchester leans forward on her caramel-colored leather sofa, her legs crossed to reveal just the slightest hint of her knees peeking out under her silky white skirt. I don't know much about labels, but it's obvious everything Nina Winchester is wearing is painfully expensive. Her cream blouse makes me long to reach out to feel the material, even though a move like that would mean I'd have no chance of getting hired. To be fair, I have no chance of getting hired anyway. Well, I begin, choosing my words carefully. Even after all the rejections, I still try. I grew up in Brooklyn. I've had a lot of jobs doing housework for people, as you can see from my resume. My carefully doctored resume. And I love children. And also, I glance around the room, looking for a doggy chew toy or a cat litter box. I love pets as well. The online ad for the housekeeper job didn't mention pets, but better to be safe. Who doesn't appreciate an animal lover? Brooklyn, Mrs. Winchester beams at me. I grew up in Brooklyn, too. <laughs> We're practically neighbors. We are, I confirm, even though nothing could be further from the truth. There are plenty of coveted neighborhoods in Brooklyn where you'll fork over an arm and a leg for a tiny townhouse. That's not where I grew up. Nina Winchester and I couldn't be more different. But if she'd like to believe we're neighbors, then I'm only too happy to go along with it. Mrs. Winchester tucks a strand of shiny golden blonde hair behind her ear. Her hair is chin length, cut into a fashionable bob that de-emphasizes her double chin. She's in her late thirties, and with a different hairstyle and different clothing, she would be very ordinary looking. But she's used her considerable wealth to make the most of what she's got. I can't say I don't respect that. I've gone the exact opposite direction with my appearance. I may be over ten years younger than the woman sitting across from me, but I don't want her to feel at all threatened by me. So for my interview, I selected a long, chunky wool skirt that I bought at the thrift store and a polyester white blouse with puffy sleeves. My dirty blonde hair is pulled back into a severe bun behind my head. I even purchased a pair of oversized and unnecessary tortoiseshell glasses that sit perched on my nose. I look professional and utterly unattractive. So the job, she says. It will be mostly cleaning and some light cooking if you're up for it. Are you a good cook, Millie? Yes, I am. My ease in the kitchen is the only thing on my resume that isn't a lie. I'm an excellent cook. Her pale blue eyes light up. Oh, that's wonderful. Honestly, we almost never have a good home-cooked meal. She titters. Who has the time? I bite back any kind of judgmental response. Nina Winchester doesn't work. She only has one child who's in school all day, and she's hiring somebody to do all her cleaning for her. I even saw a man in her enormous front yard doing her gardening for her. How is it possible she doesn't have time to cook a meal for her small family? I shouldn't judge her. I don't know anything about what her life is like. Just because she's rich, it doesn't mean she's spoiled. But if I had to bet a hundred bucks either way, I bet Nina Winchester is spoiled rotten. And will need occasional help with Cecilia as well. Mrs. Winchester says, perhaps taking her to her afternoon lessons or play dates. You have a car, don't you? I almost laugh at her question. Yes, I do have a car. It's all I have right now. My 10-year-old Nissan is stinking up the street in front of her house, and it's where I am currently living. Everything I own is in the trunk of that car. I've spent the last month sleeping in the back seat. After a month of living in your car, you realize the importance of some of the little things in life. A toilet, a sink, 